this computer. All right, okay, folks, thank you so much for being here for the uh, College Access Workshop. We have um, a few representative from Long Beach City College and Cal California State University Long Beach here uh, with us. And we have staff from uh, United Cambodian Community and Families in Good Health, which is EM3. Um, so, and uh, let me see here, just to, I'm gonna introduce first uh, Sean, perhaps uh, Sean, you can start, uh, Sean and then Art, and then you can just talk about, you know, what you do uh, as your role and then uh, and then we'll go into the detail of how to apply for college and financial aid and all that good stuff. Hello, everyone. My name is Sean Tully. I work at Long Beach City College. I work in outreach and recruitment, um, which in my capacity, I work with the communications office. So it's my job to explain what kind of college Long Beach City College is, how you can attend, what our majors are, sort of what kind of school we are. Uh, I give a lot of presentations like these, and during normal times, I'm in charge of campus tours. Hello, good Thank evening. Thank you for that. Oh. You're welcome. Oh, go ahead. Uh, uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me here, um, UCC. And um, my name is Arts Medina, and I work at Cal State Long Beach. And um, I work for the Educational Opportunity Program that services first-generation low-income students. So um, I'm happy to be here. And uh, I, I do the outreach for the EOP program at Cal State Long Beach. So that, that is, a, that is a, a huge advantage for me with working with EOP um, because I don't necessarily have to service our service, our service area. I could go beyond that. So I, I hope you get a lot out of what Sean and I have to share with you all among other presenters that may be here um, about access to college. All right. Awesome, yes, yes. I think, uh, I know we're gonna learn a lot here today. And so uh, next up, I'm gonna have Ladine talk about what the, uh, LACEF is about and the uh, and our partnership with UCC and EM3 up to up to date so far. Yeah, uh, thank you, Seon. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, yeah, this as, this partnership has been uh, for the past two years through through LACEF as our Los Angeles Scholars Investment Fund, uh, really supporting our youth of color uh, around like college access, being able to fill out financial aid helping them uh, fill, uh, fill out um, college enrollment, um, you know, just really preparing them for college as well. I, I know college is not meant for everyone as well, but also being able to find alternative options as well. You know, so looking at trade school, uh, different, um, you know, tech schools and all that stuff that really supporting our youth of just really preparing them uh, for the future, but also their success as well. And so through our work, you know, we, we did some college tour. I know we did some college tour at Cal State uh, Long Beach, uh, Long Beach City College before uh, the pandemic and all that. Um, also, we did a presentation at, is it uh, UC San Diego, Seon? Yes, uh, <laughs> I was like, you better yeah. remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I, so um, uh, we did some, presentation at the student really uh, is talking about uh, being able to navigate uh, the uh, college. You know, I, I know sometimes it can be very difficult and all that stuff. So just being able to really provide a lot of support for our youth of color. And so we, we've done a lot of work. Uh, I, I know we had KGA as well, Kamai Girls in Action. Um, you know, so just, it, it was fun, you know, um, just, uh, it was a great partnership. Uh, again, like, uh, like I say, it was two years. And so um, we're excited to continue our work. I, I know uh, this has been in, in the making itself. So we're glad to uh, start doing some college access workshop as well. So I'm glad everyone is here. I, and we're looking forward to, you know, uh, doing this workshop. And so I'm gonna pass it on to Jamie actually. All right, thanks, Lene. Yeah, so welcome everyone. Um, 
So I want to kickstart this workshop by doing a little mini icebreaker. We are going to be sharing this space for a little bit together. So it's going to be a nice way for us to all get to know each other. Um, so what I want us to do is to introduce uh, your name. Um, if you are a guest speaker, if you're like working with EM3, or if you're a student attending this um, workshop right now. And then I also want to know if you guys had your own school and you can pick a mascot, what would your mascot be and why? Um, if you don't have any clue what your mascot's gonna be, uh, you can also think about what your favorite mascot is right now. Um, but feel free to throw it in the chat box um, or if you wanna share it out loud, that's perfectly okay too. Um, so I can begin. So my name is Jamie. I am a program coordinator uh, at United Cambodian Community. And if I had a mascot for a school, I think I would do house sparrows. So this is, um, I'm a little biased towards them. I had a pet house sparrow um, and they were like, I think they're really fun characters, but the thing that really uh, stood out to me was when they're in a group, they're like a pretty powerful, uh, like gathering. I've seen like groups of house sparrows chase hawks away and stuff like that. So I kind of value the whole concept of like uh, being an individual, but working together. And I think that's a, a really interesting and unique mascot idea. And then I just want to, um, if anybody wants to volunteer to go next, um, or you can feel free to write uh, your ideas in the chat box. Yeah, I just put, oh, it looks like Cameron wants to say something. Um, my name is Cameron and I'm a junior and uh, what was name your school mascot? Um, if I had a school mascot, it would be a falcon. Okay. Oh, it would just be a falcon because I would name it after um, FDR. So falcon FDR. All right, cool. Thanks, Cameron. Would anybody like to uh, volunteer to go next? Uh, I could go next. Um, my name is Jake, and I'm a senior at Long Beach Polytechnic. And if I had to have a mascot, it would probably be a, a, a gray wolf, just because they can lead a pack. Wow, that's a really cool one. All right, thanks, Jake. Do we have another volunteer to introduce themselves? Uh, I, I can go. Uh, my name is Tristan Tang. I'm with EM3. And uh, I pick a monkey because it's my favorite animal. Oh, that sounds like a really fun one. All right, thanks, Tristan. Anybody else want to share um, their name? Um, your age, what school or uh, what grade you might be in right now, or and then what mascot um, you would pick if you had your own school? Uh, I can go. Uh, so uh, my name is Cody. I go to Poly. Uh, I'm a junior. I'm with EM3. Uh, so if I had to pick a mascot for uh, a school, I'd probably say a raccoon because raccoons, uh, even though they are quite annoying, they're surprisingly intelligent and uh, they're pretty persistent about it, their goals. Sounds good. Oh, yeah, I've, I've definitely seen, I've seen a raccoon, like, take a cap off of a cup, reach in, grab something from it, and then kind of, kind of put it back on. But, but I was very surprised they actually took the cap off. They are quite smart. All right. Thanks, Cody. And Adalia, I think I saw your mic go on mute. Yes. Um, my name is Adalia. I'm a sophomore at Wilson. And for my mascot, I'd probably choose a turtle, just because I, I like turtles. Sounds good. Thanks, Adalia. Anybody else want to go next? Yeah, I can go. Um, my name is Toxica. I'm 16. I go to Poly. I'm with EM3 and Air. And uh, my mascot for my school would be an octopus, because nice. octopus are the smartest animals in the sea. And I like octopus colors, like when they change colors. It's really nice. Oh, yeah, that is really cool when they um, are able to camouflage. Right, right. 
All right, sounds good. Well, thank you guys for sharing. Um, if anybody else wants to share their mascot, feel free to type it in the chat box. Um, I'm gonna throw it back to Seon, um, who's gonna introduce our uh, guest speakers. Thank you so much, Jamie. Yes, uh, so we're really glad to have uh, Sean Colley and Art Medina here. So uh, please share about your school. Uh, so I, I believe we're gonna have Sean go first. Um, if you need me to give you permission to share uh, slides, I can do that. Yes, please. Okay, so there you go. Excellent, cool. Uh, so once again, a little bit about myself. Um, I'm from Long Beach City College. I grew up in Long Beach. I went to Wilson, uh, then I attended Long Beach City College before I transferred to UCLA where I got my bachelor's. Uh, after attending UCLA, I got a job at Long Beach City College working in outreach and recruitment, really talking about the college. Um, if you have any questions during my presentation, um, you wanna know more about sort of Long Beach City College or about the process of transferring to a UC uh, and attending the, that school and what sort of the differences are, I'm more than happy to talk about that in my experience. Um, I'm sort of going to give you sort of a big, broad overview of Long Beach City College and some of our programs. It's my goal that you ask questions because I kind of think those are more interesting. I'd rather sort of answer things that you guys care about and are interested in rather than just sort of talking at you the whole time. And if you can't hear me, let me know. I can uh, speak louder <laughs> or I'll do my best too. It's actually um, perfect I, now. Yes. yes great. Fine. I moved a little forward and I think maybe that's helping. Cool, all right, so I'm gonna share my screen and we'll officially start the, the presentation. And, and, so, for those, sorry, uh, so, and for those that want to put question, please you can put it in the chat as well, okay? Besides yeah. raising your hand at the bottom. Cool. So Long Beach City College, uh, we are a two-year school, which means in general, our students are attending our school for one of three reasons. They're at our school for reason one, they wanna get an associate's degree. That's gonna be a two-year college degree, AA or AS. Associate of Arts, because you're interested in studying things like language arts, because you're interested in becoming a writer, a journalist. Uh, you're interested in studying visual arts. You're interested in drawing, painting, graphic design, or um, maybe performing arts. You're interested in music. You're interested in acting. You're interested in um, video production. Those would all be performing arts. Or you could do it in sort of the humanities. That would also be an associate of arts degrees because you're interested in learning about sociology or history or philosophy, all the sort of studies of people. Those would all be associate of arts degrees. You could also come to our school and get an AS. An AS would be an associate of science degree because you're interested in studying things like mathematics, engineering, biology, all the sort of sciences. The second reason our students come to Long Beach City College is because they're interested in showing they've mastered one skill set and they're interested in earning a professional certificate. And that's to show that they have mastered the ability to usually do some sort of trade because you're interested in becoming a welder, an auto mechanic, you're interested in becoming a chef, you're interested in becoming a nurse, or you're interested in showing you've mastered technology. We offer a ton of certificates in technologies because maybe you want to show you've mastered things like Excel, QuickBooks, PowerPoint. Uh, you've mastered programming languages like JavaScript, or, or you've mastered cybersecurity programs, or um, database management programs like Amazon Web Services, for example. You can get certificates and all those things in and out of college in one semester or one year, not having to take a bunch of math and English classes, but just sort of getting in, graduating, and moving on to your next thing. Looks like we have a question in the chat, maybe. That's exciting. Oh, somebody was just letting you know to put questions in the chat. That's cool. Um, you can also do both. You can get an associate's degree and a certificate along the way. A lot of our students do that too. I would encourage you to think about your education like a ladder. And by that, I mean that you're achieving smaller goals along your way in order to achieve your big end goal of getting the career that you want to. Sometimes I think it can be difficult to put in the work necessary if you're like, I want to go to school. I want to get that, that amazing job, but it's like four years before I get to do the thing that I want to do. But if you're thinking about it like a ladder, you're thinking about, I'm going to go to school for one semester, get a certificate. I'm going to go to school for another semester, get another certificate, and then one more year, and then I have an associate's degree, and then two more years, and then I have my bachelor's. And then it's a little easier breaking it down to smaller pieces. So goal one, associate's degree, goal two, certificate, and then we have goal three, which is to earn a bachelor's degree. And while you can't do that at Long Beach City College, you could start the process. So you would take two years of school with us, you take all your general education classes, your math, English, history type classes, the ones that almost every student has to take in order to graduate, um, regardless of what you want to major in. And then you would transfer to a four-year school like Cal State Long Beach or UCLA or USC or wherever it is you chose to transfer to, whatever four-year school. 
Um, we are the number one transfer school to Cal State Long Beach. So if your ultimate goal is Cal State Long Beach, we would be the best community college to come to to start that process. We have a really good relationship with them. Their counselors are on our campus all the time. Uh, it should be easier for you to make that transition. Cool, someone's doing that right now, excellent. Yeah, a lot of our students do that. That's why most people are coming to our school, which is exciting. We also offer, speaking of um, making your, your school a ladder, we have something called an AAT or an AST, which is an Associate of Arts for Transfer, which is really excellent because you're getting an associate's degree, but you've also fulfilled the transfer requirements to go to a Cal State. So you're doing both things at once, which is really cool. I, a lot of students doing that now. It's what I recommend when I talk to students one-on-one -on -one, because you're getting both those things sort of checked off, which is really nice. Um, so what kind of, a little bit more about Lummi City College. We have two campuses. We are not two schools. We have our liberal arts campus and our Pacific Coast campus. We have an interactive digital map, which I'm pulling up now, which allow you to navigate around campus, which is pretty cool. Uh, because maybe you wanna know where your nursing class is located. So you would click on it and you could click on the different buildings that are in there and that would pull them up. And you know it's in building C and then it'll pull over to building C, which is pretty neat and show you where it is on campus. And it would let you help navigate your way there, which is neat. Back. Oh, too much. The um, thing about Lamichi College with our two campuses is that most of the subjects are taught both places. So your math, English, history are taught both on the Liberal Arts campus and the Pacific Coast campus. All of our student services, admissions and records, financial aid, counseling are located on both campuses which is really nice because you don't have to go across town if you want to get those things done. You want to talk to a counselor, you can do it on either campus. You want to talk to admissions and records, you can do that on either campus. You want to take English classes, math classes, you can do that on both campuses. That being said, there are some things that are only taught on this liberal arts campus, and there are some things that are only taught on the Pacific Coast campus as well. On the only taught on the Pacific Coast campus uh, would be, uh, there's a cat on our screen, that's fun. Uh, would be all of our trades. So if you're interested in studying things like welding, auto mechanics, electrical technology, that's all gonna be at our, our Pacific Coast campus. If you're interested in studying any of the performing arts, any of the fine arts, that's all gonna be at the liberal arts campus. Athletics is there too, along with nursing and culinary arts. There is a free shuttle that runs once an hour and it runs back and forth. Show them your Long Beach City College ID and you can go between the two campuses, which is nice. You don't have to take the bus across town or things like that, which is pretty cool. Uh, but what can you study at Long Beach City College? A tons of things. We have 68 majors at our school. Uh, if you go to our website and you scroll over academics, you'll get a drop down menu. It'll say explore our programs, click on it. And we'll have a big list of all of our broad programs. We click on, on all. Then we get the full list, it's 68 programs, everything from accounting to anthropology, to automotive technology, to business information, business administration, dance, digital publication, engineering, fire science, and on and on. If we were to click on one of them, like we click on history, for example, then we can learn a little bit more about that, that subject. You can see who the department head is, their phone number and email address, which I think is really nice. Long Beach City College is very transparent in that way. It makes it really easy to ask questions and find out more information about those individual subjects, which can be really nice. Um, also listed on that page will be often the career opportunities. It'll list what department it's, it's in or associated with, and it'll list the curriculum guide. A curriculum guide lists all of the subjects and classes that you're required to take to earn an associate's degree in that area. So in this instance, the one to earn an associate's of arts for transfer, it's going to list all the classes you need to take to achieve that goal, which is pretty cool because it means that you're just essentially checking off boxes. You're making sure that you do this class and this class and this class. It's not like, I don't know what classes I'm supposed to take. I hope I get a degree. That's not what happens here. It's like you do this one and then you do this one and then you do this one and you know that you've, you've achieved that goal and you're getting ready to transfer to a Cal State, which is really nice. There's that, there's isn't that level of ambiguity. Um, let's say you sort of know what you wanna do. You're thinking about applying. I hope that's the case. Where do you do that? You're gonna do that on our website. 
you're once again going to go to the top of the page. You're going to scroll over admissions and aid. You'll get a drop down menu. It'll say get started. Click it. If you wanted to, you could watch a video. It's nice. We're not going to watch it today because I find that the sound doesn't come through on Zoom, which is unfortunate. Uh, but you'll scroll down and you'll say start my application unless you'd like help. If you'd like help, click help me apply. We're more than happy, happy to walk you through the application process. It's pretty easy. Generally, it takes about 20 minutes for students to complete it. And then one to three days later, depending on whether it's a weekend, we'll then email you back your Long Beach City College ID number. And then you're you're applied. You're, you're a member of Long Beach City College. Congratulations. It's super easy. There's no reason not to apply. It's free. It's easy. It takes 20 minutes. And applying to Long Beach City College and getting an ID number would not stop you from attending any other school. There's no sort of penalty. You would, you would still be able to go to Cal State Long Beach. You would still be able to go to UCLA or USC or Cerritos College or wherever else. But if you don't apply to Long Beach City College, you don't get an ID number. You can't meet with a counselor. You can't enroll in classes. You can't check out a book from the library. You can't do anything in our school without filling out that application and getting that ID. Our application is uh, part of the CCC Apply application. That's the California Community College Systems application. It's all the same for every community college in California, which is also nice because it makes it really easy and seamless. Many of our students are going to attend our school, and then they're going to take a school, a class at Del Camino. Then they're going to take a class at Cerritos, and the, all the classes are going to transfer really easily, which is nice too, because we're a part of this big system. It's all really seamless. Uh, every class on our schedule of classes lists whether it transfers to the Cal States or the UCs. So once again, you know that you're taking classes that are going to transfer, or you're you know they're taking classes that aren't going to transfer, because we don't want you to waste your time, the money, and effort taking classes that aren't going to help you achieve your goals. Let's say you've applied, you got your ID number, you should get an email from us with your next steps. If you don't get an email, don't panic. It's probably went to your spam folder or your email provider just blocked it. There are some days where many students apply all at once. And we, so we send out like hundreds of emails to Yahoo email addresses and Yahoo just hates us for some reason. <laughs> Block it, don't panic. Just contact me or our admissions office and we'll look up your ID number and get it to you so you can get started. Uh, but we're gonna assume that it's gonna work correctly. You'll get your ID. Your next steps are to start with our welcome center because we're welcoming you as a new student. Scroll over admissions and aid, go to the welcome center. You can see our little bot just popped up. Ah, that'll help you. It's a little chat bot so we can help you direct you to where you need to go in case you need additional help, which is pretty nice too. In my instance, I don't because I, I do this for a living. <laughs> So we're not going to play around with it too much. Um, for you guys, if you're high school seniors, high school juniors, you might click this button, and that would list how you can get started as a high school student. Uh, I'm going to talk to you at the moment about uh, our first year experience program uh, in just a second, which is really cool. You'll qualify for that, guys, too. Um, but let's click on the new and continuing students. Then you might want to click Welcome Center Staff if you want to help with the actual orientation and enrolling process. If you don't, if you just want to do it yourself, which is okay, then you might click on Enrollment Guides and Videos. On this page, we have videos for all the steps in the process. So applying to our school, applying for financial aid, we have both a PDF, which is going to break down the steps, uh, and we have a video, which is going to walk you through the process as well. And we have that for all the steps you'll need to complete, setting up your Viking portal, completing online orientation, doing the um, participation agreement, doing the guided placement tool, all the sort of steps you'll have to do in the process of becoming a student are all laid out here, which is really nice. Your next step after you've applied is probably gonna be to do orientation. That's really the next one. The orientation is all about sort of how do you become a student in college? How is college serving in high school? What are the really basic things you need to know? Uh, to be a student at our school. The next step after that, that I think is really important is counseling. We'll have a video right here once again on how you meet with a counselor, or you can go through our academics page, drop down menu, and then click on counseling. Then you'll set up a counseling appointment. Notice where it's here, it says schedule your own appointment. The point of the counseling, is to make sure that you are making a plan about what classes you need to take and what sequence so you can make sure you achieve your goal here at Long Beach City College. 
there are many different goals. There's the goal one, once again, associate's degree, goal two, a certificate, goal three, to transfer. And then within that, there's a bunch of sub goals because you could want to transfer to a Cal State, a UC, a private school, an out-of-state school. So it's important that you talk to somebody who can make sure you're taking the right classes. Because we don't want you to once again take classes that aren't going to help you graduate. I'm going to dip back over to our Welcome Center once again. And we do that by clicking on Admissions and Aid. Scroll down, Welcome Center. You guys, for the most part, are Long Beach Unified students, correct? I'm betting yes. Yes. Yes, sir. Excellent. Yes, sir. So you guys will qualify for our best program, a program that wasn't a thing when I was at Long Beach City College, and which I'm extremely jealous of. You guys will qualify for something called the Long Beach College Promise. I hope you guys are familiar with it. If not, um, then I'm going to talk about it now. If you guys grew up in the Long Beach area, you probably took the fourth grade tour, which I ran uh, and still run. Uh, so I told you about it then. So I hope you still remember. So good. College yes. Promise. I'm sorry. I just have to say that. Yeah, no, it's great. Uh, I'm super, it's, and it gets bigger every year. It gets better every year, which is great too. So the Long Beach College Promise is this. If you graduate from a Long Beach Unified School and come straight to Long Beach City College, we're going to waive your tuition for your first two years. As long as you're a full-time student, as long as you complete financial aid, as long as you're passing your classes, which is really amazing. It's two years of your college experience paid for. It's half a bachelor's degree paid for. Um, college is really expensive, but not for you if you pass, if you're in the College Promise. This was, like I said, not a thing when I was in college. I wish it would have been. I would have loved two years of free college, um, which is pretty cool as well. You also get priority registration. So you get registered for classes earlier than the general population. You also get a, meet with a dedicated counselor and there's also a success coach. So there's a bunch of things that are gonna help you keep on track because part of being successful in college is passing your math and English classes, but part of it's figuring out how does college work so you can be successful. So you can make sure you're doing the things you need to do in the, the order and sequence you need to do them in. So I think that's all I wanted to say for now. I know you guys are gonna ask questions. I don't wanna say some stuff later and I don't wanna take up a bunch of arts time. Thank you very much for letting me talk to you guys though and letting me sort of jump on my soapbox. Thank you. So I will unshare my screen and uh, let Art jump in. All right, thank you, Sean. Uh, nice meeting you too. And um, I, I wrote your name down, so you're gonna be hearing a lot from me and, and same to you. So what, what you all just learned right now is networking. I met Sean for the first time and then I don't need his email. Technology is gonna find me his email uh, when I go to Long Beach's uh, website. So hello everybody, my name is Art Medina. Um, you, may, you may have known me or met me before or not. Um, I see familiar faces. I just met Jamie tonight and I'm so happy because she's a new connect with, with uh, UCC. Um, well, I, I'm a Long Beach native too. Um, not born here, but uh, came here from a, a little tiny island called Guam. And, uh, and uh, if you thought I was Mexican, well, you could thank the Spanish con conquerors because they came to Guam and, and messed us up. <laughs> so, you know, all, all, of, all of our countries are messed up, which, which in the long run, it brings in like a nice blend of a lot of similarities among us than differences. So, um, Jamie, if I had a mascot for my high school, um, it would be rice. Now, you all may laugh, or you may think, why rice? Because it's, it's, it's a staple in our Asian and Pacific Islander communities where, where the Mexicans have their tortillas and the, you know, and um, my wife is a uh, Caucasian and she loves potatoes and I'm, I hate potatoes. It's like, where is the rice? Um, but rice can be, rice can be um, dangerous to our um, communities as well as we are sedentary, sedentary in America. And uh, in like, in case, it, well, y'all seen Simones and they're really big people, but uh, a lot of them are obese, which is happening in our communities as well. And uh, rice really messes with your diabetes. So that is the strongest, most impactful carbohydrate um, that, that is damaging our communities. So um, there's good and bad, okay? So um, 
man, I'm going straight from the dome. I've been doing this for a long time, and I, I know I know Uncle Uncle Sayon there, and and Ladine, and Uncle Sambo, um, and I'm your uncle too. All right, um, don't play. <laughs> that's how we that's how we recognize our communities, and and to be in a in a room with um, the, you know a lot of men of color and and women. Um, I, I of of the Kamai are we? Most of us are Kamai, right? Um, I, I, I love to be in this kind of space because I never see it. So this is, this is a perfect opportunity for me to, to get to know you and introduce myself as, as I, I am an ally for you as, as much as, as Sean um, to, to get into higher education, okay? Um, there's nothing wrong with going through the tech route and, and, and getting certificated in that because auto mechanics, they make good money. They make good money, okay? And uh, so if you're good with your hands and you got your skills, um, become an entrepreneur, uh, create your own business, and you can you know, achieve those, those classes to how to manage your budget, how to network, all that kind of stuff to run your business at Long Beach City and at Long Beach State if you decide to do that, okay? Um, Knowledge is power. So, so um, just just knowing us already, you, you are powerful in in your own self. Okay, um, Cal State Long Beach, uh, campus of thirty over thirty eight thousand students. Okay, um, applications received um, over over one hundred and ten thousand applications that come into Long Beach State. Now, I say that for a lot of reasons because. Um, don't let those numbers scare you. Um, don't don't let anything scare you. You got a great network here, of of um, again uncles and aunties to help you get through higher education. So, um, and that's what I want to break down. You know, um, in those commun in, in in underrepresented communities, um, we are we are um, there, there's a lot of like negative connotations that that stop you right there from. Of, of even applying. So, and I, and I wanna address that um, because uh, there, there's, there's, you know, if, if you don't apply, you already know your answer of, of getting admitted or not. So apply, the, the opportunity there, okay? Um, Cal State Long Beach and with the CSU system, there are 23 CSUs and there are a lot of impacted CSUs already. Um, that means they're going to require higher GPAs and higher test scores with the SAT and ACT. Now, Sean didn't mention SAT and ACT because you don't need them to go into a community college. Um, yeah, yeah, which is, and, and I went through, oh, um, Art Medina, Rice is my mascot, um, grew up in all sides of, of the LBC, West Side, Seabright and Willow, um, in the Wrigley, Maine and Willow, um, in the North Side. Um, you know that bridge, that bridge that that that's between like uh, the cemetery and Superior. Yeah, I I, I walked that bridge, um, and every morning because I took the bus to go to Milliken, I I was not going to go to Jordan. Uh, so I I made it I made it my point to um, go to Milliken because I came here to go Rams. Yes, yes, and and yes. I know Sion is, is an alumni from Milliken as well. And, uh, you know, impressions can, can scare a boy where he was raised up in an island where there was no gates, no gates to your elementary school. But uh, if you, if, but in the islands, we, we, we knew not to ditch. Because you know why? Everybody knew each other in that village. <laughs> so, so go ahead, go ahead and ditch. Um, I ditched. I ditched one time and, and I saw my dad coming for lunch from his work. And I was like, oh, dang, oh, dang, I'm going to get the belt. Um, but uh, we came over to America uh, and, and I saw Polly and I said, oh, hell no. <laughs> this don't look like no high school. What is this? The gates all over and what, what is this? So um, I made it, I, I, true story, I made it a route to like, not go to Poly in the first high school I heard, 
uh, beyond Polly was Milliken. So I said, I'm going Milliken. I'm going to go Milliken. <laughs> I went to Long Beach City. I, I graduated in um, at Long Beach State with my bachelor's degree in anthropology. And uh, I, you know, I networked and I've been at Long Beach State for um, about 20 years now. Okay. So, it, and, and that's why I'm not taking notes or I hope you're taking notes or I'm just shooting out these words again and they're big and they're big, but let's break that down. Okay. Um, SAT, ACT, um, people of color, they, they test, they don't do well in these, in these tests. Okay. In fact, um, the CSU and the UC made it a point to change the SAT. And um, for like the last year or so, we did not look at SAT or SAT, SAT or ACT scores to determine um, admission, okay? So really, um, people of color do, do poorly in standardized testing and, um, and, and it, it's all political. They want people of color to attend their universities, but yet we don't do well in standardized testing. So they, they had to make the decision of what do you want to do? What do you want to do, right? And uh, that's where nonprofits like UC, UCC um, come in and assist and, and EM3, okay? Um, so so it's, you, know, you, you got to do well in your A2G requirements, okay? And uh, show, show any kind of reaction on, your, on the bottom um, of your screen. Um, click on a reaction if you do not know your A through G requirements. And I'm not, I'm putting you on the spot, but again, there's a lot to be put on the spot because we, we need that help. Or if you need that help, we want to identify the A through G requirements with you. Okay, so I, I do not see any reactions going on, or you may be, um, you know, scared, but I want to offer this opportunity that I'm your friend. I may be big, but that's, that's to your advantage. All right. Um, I'm your uncle. So all the girls in this room, man, that boy's bothering you, call Art. All right. Um, so I do not know my A through G requirements. Show me your reaction. Okay. So you know your A through G requirements. All right. Whether you're a freshman, you've heard of those words. You want to, by, by as soon as you can, get to know, be an expert in knowing your A through G requirements. These are 15 core units. That, are con that you must take in high school and complete with a C or better, okay, um, to be considered for admission into the CSU and UC universities, okay, to be considered, all right? So you have to pass all of them, C or better, okay? Now, at Cal State Long Beach, you, you want a 4.0, okay? You want to achieve for 4.0, okay, because we're competitive, all right? Now, let's say it's, it's you know, you may have a disability, you may um, not like school, but you know you want to go to college to get a job or a career, that is possible too, because there are UCSUs, um, California State Universities, again, there's 23 that are not competitive at all, and we say competitive based on the number of applications coming into our campus, okay? At, at Cal State Long Beach, we're hot, we're hot. We received 110,000 applications, all right? I see that, Ladine. Thank you, thank you, brother. Um, so um, uh, the, the, the higher, the, the number of applications coming into the colleges, to the CSUs make us very competitive, which makes us have to raise the GPA and the test scores for admission. But Cal State Long Beach has our own Long Beach promise, okay? We don't pay your first two years of, of, of tuition. That's why Long Beach State is a great route to go through, okay? Um, but if you pass minimum requirements of an eligibility index score of a 3,200, you're in at Cal State Long Beach, no matter what, okay? Now, I'm mentioning eligibility index, but let's have that conversation later, okay? If you don't know what that means, visit Mrs. Shroka at Wilson, 
or um, the, the counselor's not coming to, to my head for Polly. Um, who, who, know, who knows that the counselor at Polly, if you could chat her out, that'd be cool. Okay. But I, I can contact her. I, I can give you her information if you miss Womack. Thank you, Ivan. All right. Ivan, you get 2,000 imaginary points for a free coffee. Okay. All right. Now it's imaginary. So, you know, talk to Ladine about what imaginary means. Okay. All right. So um, I, I said a lot of big words, um, but again, don't worry. Okay. Um, whether, whether you're college bound or not, um, let's have that conversation. I know I work for Long Beach State. It's a big campus. Um, and, and EM3 has bought, has brought um, men to the university, but, but um, my two minutes are, are not going to fulfill all that, all that good, all that good meat, all that good meat and good sauce with the pho to like mix in with your rice, you know, because after I eat that pho, I put in some rice with the broth. And then it's like, who wants to just drink soup? You know, I have to, I have to, so, so I have to mix that in with the rice. So, um, your uncles and aunties have my email address and uh, I want to further, really further the conversation. So I challenge you to get in contact with me um, or, or Sean and, and, and I know Sean, it's our jobs, right? I, I challenge you to get with us to have further conversations, really, you know, um, a, a lot of men, hey, EM3, the ladies are beating us in achieving our higher education degrees nationwide, okay? And you're gonna hear the word underrepresented, all right? I'm Pacific Islander, I'm not Asian, but we are clumped in the same category, which, which can benefit us and hurt us. But um, if you wanna know that, get at me, all right? And we are, under, we are not underrepresented. Our communities are not underrepresented. So, so write this down. Our communities are invisible, okay? We're invisible. With a campus of 38,000 students at Cal State Long Beach, I bet you there's like, I would think about 200 Pacific Islander students. So you do the math, 200 divided by 38,000 and multiply that by 100, that's the percentage of Pacific Islanders at Cal State Long Beach. And there's no reason for that because we got them Big Samoans in Carson and Long Beach and the Tongans in Lawndale and Hawthorne. No reason, okay? So we, we got to prepare ourselves and it starts now. If you're not ready for college, it starts now. A through G, 4.0, so that you can open the doors for, for UG, UC bound and CSU bound. What happened? And if, and if LBCC is your way, then go too, okay? Jennifer, you have a question? Oh no, I'm sorry. I just unmuted myself. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Well, nice to meet you anyway. My time is done. Um, so I, I will pass it on to Sion. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Art. Uh, or Ladine. <laughs> uh Sean, uh, Art, uh, thank you for your insight. Now it's time for QA. Uh if if folks have any questions for Art or Sean, um, just really about Long Beach City College or Cal State Long Beach or just just in general, you know. So maybe uh, if you if you want to speak or you could use the chat box. So either or what what works best. Maybe I could uh, maybe I could break the ice first. Uh, for Art and Sean, uh, any advice for new students uh, enrolling in Long Beach City College or Cal State Long Beach? Sure, I would just say um, get involved, join a club, join an organization. The more connected you are to campus, the more you're going to want to go to school every day. And then you'll have people that you can ask questions to. Part of being successful in college is like passing your math and English classes. But part of it's also just figuring out like, how does college work? What is a prerequisite? What's the FAFSA? What's the deadline to apply for financial aid? All those little things that you maybe don't know before you start college that you have to learn along the way uh, are really important to learn. So joining a club, uh, signing up for some sort of academic program, whether that's like a first year experience program or a SOAR or one of these sort of things. It's really a good thing to do. 
um, my, my advice is to um, um, stay, stay on campus as long as you can. Um, you, even though it's a commuter school, I understand that um, in some communities, no, I would say, I know in our, in our communities after class, go home. Um, your mom or dad is going to say, hey, what time you get out of class today? Because I need you to watch your little brother or sister. It's like, ma, I, I got to go library <laughs> after, after class. And, and why you, you don't have to go to the library. You, you could stay home. It's like, no, ma, there's, there's so much, there's so much distractions here. I need to study at the library. I need to get involved with the Khmer uh, or the Cambodian Student Society at Cal State Long Beach because we're, we're having study night and they can, they, there's some, there's two or three students there that can help me because they're in my classes that I'm having trouble in. Okay. So get, get to know, get to know these, uh, these, these reasons why you have to make your, your campus, your home. Okay. It, it will improve your GPA. If you spend, um, a lot of time on campus and get acquainted, find your circle, find your niche, mm -hmm. find a student service, like the educational opportunity program that will help you. Jake, are you in at Cal State Long Beach? Yeah? He, he just got accepted, yes. so that's right. his question. Oh, nice. Are you in EOP? Uh, no. Ah, oh, Sambo. You gotta come Dean. see art. So, hey, Jake, I'm a big dude. So go get a big marker and write my name on, on a piece of notebook paper and get at me anytime you need and I'm gonna get you into the SSSP program, the Student Support Services Program. They're a sister program, they're federally funded, but just get at me, Jake, okay? I'm not writing, I'm not writing your name down. Um, you, you, you write my name down, okay? Um, so Jake, <laughs> let's, let's get involved. Um, you're gonna learn more about, you're gonna get information from SOAR. Yes, you have to pay that $150. Um, it goes toward your tuition, okay? But you have May 1st, you may be shopping around other places, but you have May 1st to, to make that decision and, and $150 is gonna hold your spot at Long Beach State, okay? So um, the Dean, Sambo, hey, you have my personal cell phone number, mm -hmm. give it to your students. Um, I, 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 I encourage them to call me, okay? But get involved, find your circle. Cool, thank you, Art. Uh, Another question I have for both of you, oh, what are some challenges for new students that you see a lot? Big fish in the little, uh, little yeah. fish in the big pond. Okay. Okay. Uh, Cal State Long Beach is huge. When I transferred, <laughs> when I transferred from Long Beach City to Cal State Long Beach, I, I wanted to give up my first month and a half. And you know why? There were no faces of mine that represented my, my classroom. Okay, um, the African Americans, the Latinos, the Latinas had their, furor, their had their fraternities and sororities. And whenever I was outside of class, I was just jealous looking around. But you know what kept me involved? Um, I saw this Hawaiian dude with like uh, a tank, a white tank top on, with the ia lava lava, and and that's a sarong um, for you guys. Okay, and he was playing a ukulele, had these sunglasses on, looked real intimidating but I knew he was my peoples. And then he led me into the Pacific Islanders Association. Then I got involved in like being a member, cleaning tables, moving chairs. And then I ended up being a president. And then I ended up uh, getting over about $20,000 to promote our culture paid by Long Beach State students. So, and that led me to network into other groups like EOP and someone believed in me and hired me. Okay, nice. so get involved. Um, you're a little fish in a big pond, but find your niche. And, and it's me, and it's Sean, and it's Ladine, it's Jamie, it's Sayun. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I think I just want to echo that, that it can be difficult when you're going to new school. And college is different than high school in that in high school, everyone automatically gives you help. Oh, here, help, here's some help. Here's your counselor. You're going to meet with them on Tuesdays. And in college, that help is still there, but you have to go out and ask for it. If you want to talk to counseling, you have to make the counseling appointment. No one's going to make it for you. If you want to talk to a financial aid office because you're not sure you completed your FAFSA correctly, 
you have to make that appointment. So it's really up to you to sort of take that initiative, that personal responsibility. It's also why I think it's good to get yourself involved with the club and things like that, because there's all those little reminders. Um, I would also say that there are, are lots of resources like tutoring on our campus, for example. We have a math success center. We have an English success center. Um, we have um, a lot of our classes have what we call SLOs and SLAs, which are uh, supplemental learning for those classes, which is like sort of embedded tutoring and assistance to that class to make sure that you're getting the things done that you need to get done and they're successful. So there is a lot of help out there, but I think it's a challenge for students because they they feel awkward or embarrassed about asking for it or they don't know they need to ask. If you're infused at all, or even if you think you're doing it correctly, just ask and confirm because we would much rather tell you you're doing the, or the right thing, you're doing a good job, rather than you not ask and then all of a sudden you've missed it, an important deadline. Little things like that. Don't, you know, please reach out. That's why we're there. We're there to serve students. We're there to help you. We're there to make sure you're successful. And we, we would love to give you pats on the back because you're already doing it correctly. Right. Cool. And, and for parking, I think we got a question about parking. Parking, yeah, parking. right now is free, um, but normally it's 30 bucks a semester. Our parking is way cheap. Wait till Art tells you who they're parking. $140 a semester. <laughs> Ooh. And if you don't get there at seven o'clock, um, you have to, you have to like an eagle find a spot. Okay. So um, Cody or no, um, who asked, someone asked about business courses. I'm um, at Kelsey Cody. Long Beach, international, international business, marketing, accounting, um, finance, um, I think hospitality, no, that may be a different major, a different college, but um, within our COB, our College of Business, it's uh, all majors are impacted at, at Cal State Long Beach. And again, you qualify as, as a local area student. So um, you just get that 3,200 on your eligibility index um, and, and you're in, okay? Um, but something to say about that eligibility index, and that's why I say, um, perform higher than that 32 is because your peers are definitely going to get higher index than a 3200. Okay. So, and, and, and that's, and that's, who's going to, who's going to set the GPA low curve for your class. And, and those are the kinds of students that you want to get into your study group. So we, we have, we, our college of business is very well respected. And, and we have, one, one, one last question. I know uh, Ivan mentioned, what's the process of the transferring to USC from Long Beach City College? Sure. Um, so there is a process in place. What um, It's not as streamlined as it would be to go to Cal State or UC because we're, as a community college in California, we're part of the same system. But what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to, from day one, know that that's your goal, hopefully. Uh, and then you're going to talk to your counselor, your academic counselor, and be like, hey, my goal is to transfer to USC. What steps do we need to take? And then you're going to talk to them about what the requirements are, are at USC. You're going to, I'm going to share my screen because I think that's easier. You're going to, what you're going to do is you're going to go to our transfer center. Ooh, admissions and aid, and it is right. I don't need to remember. I'm remembering where it is <laughs> on the spot. We just changed our website, which is confusing. Uh... Oh, you're gonna do super easy. If you're like me and you can't remember how to use the website, you're just gonna use the search feature and then type in transfer. And then you will go to the transfer center and then talk to our transfer student counselor, or even easier, you'll go to our homepage, you'll scroll to the bottom, you'll click LBCC Chat Hub, and then you'll go to the transfer center and you'll talk to Ruben, who's this guy, who's really cool. Uh, and then you can chat online with the, our transfer center counselors. And you'll be like, hey, my goal is USC. What do I need to do to get there? And they'll tell you, we have a great relationship with USC. We send people there all the time. I don't get it personally. I went to UCLA. I was an athlete there. So I'm very biased <laughs> against USC. Um, but, but if you want to go to USC, that's cool too. Uh, and you would save a ton of money if you start, started at Long Beach City College by doing that. Because USC you is will. way expensive. Uh, okay. you, could trans, you could talk to our transfer center that way. 
And then okay. you would make a plan about what classes you need to take in order to get over there. Okay. Okay, thank you, Art and Sean. I appreciate your, your insight again. Uh, appreciate, uh, appreciate you. You're welcome. I was talking to our uh, youth, actually. So our, our next segment is our college life panel. So I'm going to pass it on to Jamie. Go ahead, Jamie. All right, thanks, Ladine. Um, so Art and Sean, thank you. Um, if you want to stay for our college life uh, segment, uh, feel free. But if you got, I know you guys are busy, you have places to go, things to do, um, feel free to log off as well. Um, if it's okay, can I share your contact information to the youth so if they have any questions? Okay, sounds good. Yeah, I put it in the chat too, so. It's All right, great. sounds good, thank you. All right, well, thank you everyone for uh, attending our first segment of the workshop. Um, for the next part, we are gonna talk about college life. Um, so we do have some guest speakers here. They're all students. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have graduated or not already, or you're still in college, um, but attending different schools. Um, but before I introduce them, I do wanna send out a poll so before you guys uh, attended this meeting, I just wanna know how many of you had thought about going to college? And I'm gonna launch it out for maybe about a minute uh, or you guys are answering really fast, maybe 20 seconds. Um, it'll pop up on your screen. Uh, wow, I can see the answers right now. So I'll give it like a couple more seconds. Okay, cool. So it looks like everybody here has thought about going to college, um, which is super cool. I know it's a great opportunity um, to really get your leg up into like different um, career paths when you go through college. So this is our share results. We have uh, 12 people who answered. Everyone's thought about going to college. I wanna also see one more poll question. Give me a minute. So I also just want to know, um, you guys are all interested in going to college. So do you guys know anybody who has graduated or is currently in college right now? I know we all come from different backgrounds. Um, when I grew up, like the only person I knew who was in college was my sisters. Um, but even before they went to college, like my parents didn't go to college or anything like that. Um, so it's pretty uh, like, it was a pretty foreign idea of like, what is college? Like, what do I, like, what happens over there? Um, uh, and I didn't really know what it was until my sister went to college. And then once she went to college, I was like, okay, this is um, higher education. And you kind of get a bigger, better thought process about it. I'll have it up for another 10, 15 seconds. Okay, so looks like we got um, one who has a parent or guardian who attended college. A lot of our siblings have been into college or a relative. Uh, we have friends who have been into college. What about uh, for others? Can someone, who, can someone share um, your other who has been to college? Or you can type in the chat box, that's cool too. But yeah, sometimes it's like our mentors, um, our teachers, a lot of them has also gone to college as well. All right, cool. It looks like um, we're all kind of familiar with it. So I do want to introduce our college life panelists. Um, it looks like we got a full house. So for our college life panelists, uh, I want you guys to introduce your name uh, what school you guys attend, and then what major uh, did you pick? So let's start off with uh, Zin. I'm sorry if I don't pronounce your name correctly. Zin Yu? Yeah, Zin Yu. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet y'all. My name is uh, Zin Yu. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I graduated from the University of Connecticut last year with a BSc in Civil and Environmental Engineering. 
And now I am doing a women's leadership graduate certificate course through them as well, while also we're interning at City Fabric, which is a nonprofit in Long Beach. Wow, sounds good. Thank you. Next, I'll have uh, Jennifer. If you can introduce yourself. Yeah, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Jennifer. I I'm currently in my last semester at Cal State Long Beach, and I am majoring in political science and Chicano Latino studies. All right, cool, thank you. And then our next uh, panel representative is Daniel. Hello, hello, can y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. um, hey y'all, uh, I'm Daniel, I go by he, him, day. Um, just a fair warning, um, I have a powder power outage, so I'm on my phone. So uh, I went to UCLA for undergrad and currently for graduate school. Um, I did ethnic studies and Asian American studies for undergrad and minored in urban planning. And now I'm wrapping up my last quarter in urban planning as a graduate student. Yeah. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, next, can we have um, Tang? Go. Hi, all. I'm a Kao Tang Yingwa. I also go by Tang. I got my bachelor's of uh, science in bioengineering from Cal Lutheran University, and then my master's of science in global health sciences from UCSF. And I'm currently a uh, pharmacy doctoral student at the University of Southern California. So my USC student, wherever you are. <laughs> <laughs> all right, sounds good. Thank you. And next, can we have Christine go? Hi everyone, my name is Christine. I'm currently in my last semester at Cal State Long Beach and I'm majoring in health science right now. All right, sounds good, thank you. And lastly, uh, can we have Jan Janae? <laughs> Sorry if I mispronounced it. <laughs> no worries, my name is Janae and I actually went to Cal State Long Beach uh, for health science and human development. And I got a dual master's degree at USC for social work and public health. Yeah. <laughs> so fight on and go beach. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. So we want to do this college life segment um, to kind of give you guys an idea of like what this college life kind of looked like. Um, so what I'll do is it's going to be a little kind of interview style. I'm going to throw our college panelists some questions about um, college life. Um, I hope you guys are a little prepared. It's going to be a little random. Um, but for the first question, I just want to know, um, are any of you guys involved in like any clubs or activities at your when you guys were attending in um, college or uni university? So maybe um, Daniel, I'm gonna put you on the spot right now. Did you, um, were you involved in any clubs or any, did you do any extracurriculars over at UCLA? Yeah, so um, I did a lot of clubs. Uh, I did something called like a, a Southeast Asian uh, retention program at UCLA. So we got this program where um, just help a lot of Southeast Asian youth uh, understand how to uh, stay in higher education, but also uh, also give back to the community um, and learn about like the community conditions that Southeast, Southeast Asians deal with. Um, why do we have a lower uh, retention rate, um, graduation rate compared to um, other, other Asian ethnic uh, uh, minority groups? Um, so I was part of that, but um, I did a lot of cultural clubs. So I, I joined like the Filipino club, um, United Kamai students, um, just different cultural clubs to really uh, broaden my aspect of cultural arts. Um, and that really just helped me understand um, how to heal for my, myself and learn about my communities uh, and families uh, traumatic experience in the past uh, from escaping the war um, and really inform my perspective in how to plan through uh, cultural arts and um, a creative aspect in integrating the community. Um, but in graduate school, it's a little different. It's more like um, teaching research um, and just doing uh, different types of student organizing rather than 
uh, joining a specific club. Yeah. All right, sounds good. And it looks like uh, Sean has to leave. Bye, Sean. <laughs> um, and then uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to just throw it in the chat box. Like if you hear something that's piqued your interest and you want to know more about it, um, feel free to throw it in. I'll look at the chat and I'll see um, we can forward these questions. Uh, so I just want to follow up. Um, how did you, like for the ones who did join clubs or participate in activities, how did you kind of find some of these clubs and activities? Like what was the process of that for you? Um, I think for myself, a majority of the groups that I participated in or was in, or informed of, it was a lot of um, of the people just in my same, um, you know, cohort that informed me of them or in my classes that said, hey, let's join the Health Science Association. Let's go and do all of these volunteer activities. So it was really um, one of those ways where it was just peer to peer that informed me about these groups. And it was very welcoming to kind of go about it like that because you didn't feel alone. You went in with someone or if they informed you, it was almost like an invitation to go and join. So I feel like a lot of the groups, at least um, both at Long Beach and at USC, it was very much something that either with one of my peers or my um, colleagues were already a part of and I was invited in or um, someone else informed me from one of my many classes, so. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Thanks for sharing. And then, um, so I'm going to skip around a little bit. Um, so on top of clubs and activities, are any of you guys doing like an internship or kind of working, like kind of doing the dual working while you're in college at the same time? Yeah, so I'll go. Um, I actually worked all the time for all colleges, um, undergrad, grad school, and even now um, as a full-time pharmacy uh, student. So I'm at the City of Hope right now as a research uh, coordinator there. And then I also go to school full-time. Um, but I also went to school full-time in undergrad and my first grad school degree because um, I, I come from a really big family and we just didn't have the money growing up to be able to, you know, um, I didn't get enough scholarships and so I, I worked throughout all of college and it just takes a lot of time management and it did take away a little bit from, you know, like what you would want a normal college experience to be where you just like hang out and have fun because you can do all of that, but um, you kind of have to be careful or else your grades will slip a little bit. But I did work a lot and I'm still working a lot. And I would say that with the pandemic, it's actually even like a little harder now um, because a lot of our families, um, need help too for those that lost their jobs. Like a lot of my classmates who are actually um, of Khmer descent dropped out of the program this year um, because they had to support their family. And so those are things that I guess like if you come from, like if you have more privilege and you come from money, it's really easy to navigate college um, in a pandemic and just easier to navigate college in general. And I would say that the pandemic has made it even harder to, um, like connect with resources on campus. Um, and a lot of people are really struggling with college and working right now and prioritizing that. So yeah, I'm not sure if that answered the question, but it, it takes a lot of time management. Yeah, definitely. Is there any um, like little tricks or steps that you do to kind of help create that, like a better balance of balancing school and balancing work? You have to have friends who have like been there, I think, and like a really great support system. So people who just get it and then they like encourage you. So just make sure that you have like a strong support system because you can be the best planner in the world and have like three Google calendars and organizer. But if you're feeling burnt out um, and you don't have like a support system there to like be like, hey, let me check up on you and see how you're doing. You're gonna, it's going to be like, not the great, the greatest experience. So as long as you have people around you who know what that feels like and who just like love and support you, I think that you'll be fine. All right, sounds good. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, so I'm gonna follow up with that. Um, so applying to college and the whole process of going to college can be pretty challenging. Um, did any of you guys have someone who supported you through the process? Um, 
or like kind of guided you in how to apply to college or um, steps of what like what to look for when you do attend college? Uh, for me, my sister was already in the in pro in college, so she was going to UCLA at the time I I uh, applied to college. Uh, since I applied to Cal State Long Beach and my family are being like near close to Cal State Long Beach, they've also attended. So I got some guidance from them about the life of Cal State Long Beach, and I also had like another cousin who was attending. Cal State Long Beach under the business program. So he knew around like the social areas that Cal State Long Beach has and like the resources, not only to like, not only for like class help, but like financially and like the resources of like finding uh, like immigration and like to tutoring. So I had a lot of guidance from them to know the like what the feel of Cal State Long Beach is. And since being in like uh, in the Long Beach area, you kind of, you get to understand like a lot of people who end up going to Cal State Long Beach too. That's it. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Christine. And then, so when you guys were attending, like before you guys attended college, um, what was kind of like your like idea of what college was like? Like what was your impression of college? And then when you were in college, did it kind of match up with the idea or was it kind of a little different? Oh yeah, I can go ahead. Um, so I had heard that college was a great because you had a lot of independence and you can like really do whatever you want. Like you could not show up to class and no one care and no one would tell you anything, um, which I thought was great. But uh, when you attend college, it's like you do have a lot of independence, but it also comes with a lot of responsibility. So like you do have independence where you don't have to go to your classes, but when you don't go to your classes, you're way behind or like there's no one that's gonna, the teacher's not gonna email you and say like, oh, you missed class, here's the work. Or um, also like creating your schedule, like you have so much independence in creating your own schedule and taking whatever class you'd like, but also that's hard. You have to like really plan out what classes you need. You have to make sure that they um, meet your requirements. So I think that, um, it does give you a lot of freedom and independence, but it comes with a lot of responsibility. And that's what I learned my first semester in college. All right, thanks, Jennifer. And then, um, so did you guys have any like fears of, or like anything that you thought was gonna be challenging um, when it came to college? And then where, like, if you did, how did you kind of overcome that fear once you were in it? Yeah, I can share for that one. Um, so I went to college like right where I grew up. So I was really nervous that it would be like very similar to how it felt when I was in high school. Cause like I had been on the campus before like doing different things. And I was just like, oh, I'm like stuck still in my hometown. Um, but I was really privileged that I was able to like still live on campus. And I think um, getting involved in different ways and making friends and you know, taking opportunities like made it feel really immersive in that college experience. So even though it was still like in the same town, it felt like a completely different environment with you know different people and activities to be involved in. So I think exploring all the avenues that you can be a part of the campus community is really important. All right, sounds good, thank you. So um, I do wanna open the floor up uh, for Q&A, did anyone have any questions they wanted to ask? And feel free to type it in the chat box. But while uh, while people are thinking of questions to ask, um, I want to um, pose the questions for our guest speakers right now. What is your kind of like your favorite thing about college? I know there's a lot of different aspects um, when it comes to college, but what is what is the like the part that stands out to you the most? I think something great about college is that um, you get to know a lot of people from different backgrounds and cultures and people of different ages. Um, 
you know, in high school, everyone was your same age, but in college, there's a lot of people who may be older than you. And so you can get to know them, get um, to know a lot of like diverse populations. So I think that's something great about college. Sounds good, thank you. And then uh, we have Seyon who asked the question, um, so what advice would you give to your younger self? That's a good one. <laughs> Ironically, I would I would say that um, I know because I've gone to school so many times now, but um, I would say that I would tell myself to be a little more creative. Um, I really wanted to like, I think as as Asian folks, like our parents tell us, oh, be a doctor, be an engineer, be, you know, all these different things. But I would just tell like give myself a little more freedom to explore different career opportunities. Um, like when I went to college, like we didn't have League of Legends. We didn't have, you know, if you wanted to go into, if you wanted to be an artist, um, you know, you can do graphic design the way that it is done now. And, and so there's just so many creative avenues and so many different ways to make money now and to do what you love and make money. Um, I would just tell myself to really focus on like what makes me happy and then go from there. Um, instead of what makes money and then, you know, navigate from there, so. Sounds good, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm gonna follow up with that one. So I know picking a major is kind of like a really hot topic when it comes to uh, when you first enroll into college. I know for me, I changed my major about four times before I finally settled on one. Um, so I just, I'm curious to see, like, what were your guys' experience in terms of like, did you know what you wanted to do automatically or was it, did you take some time to explore? Uh, for me, I applied uh, to Cal State Long Beach undeclared. So I had open room on what to decide. Uh, for personally, for me, like I had somewhat an idea of what I wanted to do. Like I knew I liked sciences. So I like, I focused my area, like on the major, uh, the majors on sciences. So like there was, like chemistry, bio, and et cetera. Uh, per, like for class-wise, they, your counselor will ask you about that, like your focus on what classes you want to do or like what major you want to do. So they help guide you in the, your first two years on, on classes that like, cause you do need to get, do prerequisites for that major in your first two years. But you also have room to to like extracurriculars like the arts and and like the arts and other like sports. So that ended up helping me choose my major. Like at first I wanted to go into biology, but I ended up choosing like health science due to like I had a, comp a lot of like complications trying to get into biology. I think with like some majors at other schools that there will be majors that will be very impacted and it will be very hard to get classes since a lot of people are majoring in that in in those majors so that's like one of the like realistic part of trying to like get into a major certain majors at certain schools all right thanks christine for sharing i, I can share a little bit mm -hmm. um, so I, I i actually went into ucla as a business econ major and then I took my math, uh, my first calculus class. And from there, I, I was like, no more, no more, no more, uh, nothing math related anymore. Um, I thought I was good at math, but no. Um, and I switched my majors about like five times until I really got got somewhere I wanted to do. Um, and like, like, even now, like, I don't, I don't even know what I wanna do really. Um, and that's fine. I think like your major don't have to determine where you go in your life, right? Um, like I have a lot of friends who do a major and and they end up doing music on the side because that's the clubs they were a part of. Um, some friends that continue barbering while they're uh, doing their studies and they they just create something new out of like what you get from academia and what you're doing in your passions. Um, so I think like, yeah, just don't be afraid to like try new things. Um, like I, I was dancing a lot when I was in college um, and just trying to find different ways to uh, explore create, 
creative ways of thinking because those are what's going to inform like different ways to possibly think in the traditional field so like if you did like for example urban planning and then you had all these creative thoughts you would be kind of different from the other folks right all right thanks daniel um so we are near the end of a lesson or of our workshop um but i do want to uh, see if there's any final questions no oh. i noticed that um there was like a uh youth earlier who asked about transferring um are you still on by any chance um i actually did my so i i'm a, an older student in my doctoral program and i did my um, prerequisites so actually while i was doing my prerequisites at long beach city college I was actually working with Ladine and Sambo and them um, full time while I was doing that. And um, all of those prerequisites actually were able to transfer over to USC. And so if you're ever just like interested and you want to talk about that process, um, I can walk you through it because I've I've been on Long Beach City's campus. I lived in Long Beach for about six years um, until I moved more recently to be at USC. So I can definitely tell you about that experience. So I'll drop my email um, to the right in the chat. Yeah, and feel free to reach out to me because I'm a I'm currently a counselor at UCLA as well while I go to school. So um, we have to deal with um, uh, just students who transferred and um, just going through the process. You can use like transferology to look at what courses overlap mm -hmm. and then um, which major you are mm -hmm what prereqs you need to take for certain majors and stuff. So um, that's all course planning and trying to figure out uh, what overlaps and puts you in the right position for whatever school you want to go to. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Cal. Thanks, Daniel. Um, yeah, if anyone wants to drop their emails in the chat box, um, art advice of networking, um, it's a really, uh, really great thing. To, um, really helps us go to get to places uh, through the power of knowing people. Um, but it is now 530. So I'm going to pass it on over to Seyon, who's going to close us up. Thank you so much, Jamie. I and mean, all this talk makes me want to go back to college. I mean, I really do feel like it's all excited, but but not really. Once you've gone through one time, you're like, no, I'm so done. <laughs> right? It's like all the homework and the job and the uh, school load, uh, juggling. It's a lot of balance, but it, it is really rewarding. And especially for our Cambodian and API community that uh, really benefits greatly from this and um and so i i really want to thank all the college students and uh and recent graduates to uh, for being here uh and uh, just volunteer your time if uh so i just i'm just copying all the information that you put in the chat here to pass on to the students but thank you so much uh for being here sam um Sambo, Ladine, Jamie, and um, all the students, high school students here. Um, so with that, everyone have a great weekend and stay safe, okay? Thank you Bye, so much. Everyone. Bye Thank everyone, you. thanks for coming. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Thank good. you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you for joining. Good to see you, Ladine. Good, good to see you. Hopefully, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow? What's happening tomorrow? <laughs> I don't know. Good. No, not them. <laughs> good. good job, Jamie, Ladine, Sambo. Yeah, great job. Thank you. Thank you. That was fun. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank Great job, Sayon, uh, Jamie. You guys, uh, it, it was good. It was good. That Thanks was, for that us was up, y'all. Yeah, that was awesome. I think it it just it flowed so well. I thought, you know. I know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it went Thanks by fast. That. Timing check. Yeah. Uh, I was like, "What is a temperature check?" <laughs> yeah, temperature check. <laughs>